Howdy folks, my name is Steve. I'm in charge of the Disney blog project that's going on, and this is going to be the end of the month review for May 2019. Uh, today's date is June 1st as of this recording, and I wanted to show off all the things we did in the month. The goals for the month were to include pages of information. Um, so information on all of the attractions located throughout the Disneyland Resort and all of the hotels the restaurants, the shops, all of the locations, uh, inclusive of Disneyland itself, the California Adventure, and Downtown Disney, and all of the lands that are found throughout both parks, and general information on all of those uh, for consumer use, and just kind of let you filter things and see what's out there, and get you information on things that you're wanting to look at and research before you go, or even while you're there. I uh, had more than a few bug fixes on the way, which I'm always certainly happy to uh, knock off, um, and a couple of general other uh, housekeeping incidents. So uh, let's jump right in. Uh, first, I have these two boxes. You can see them in the games page uh, for some odd reason. Um, the reason is that uh, before, whenever I had just a, a general landing page that wasn't quite completed, uh, I was just putting text links for what page I was going to, and the text was very small uh, and was the wrong color for this background, and it was hard to see, and I got sick of it. So I wrote this new component um, that allows me to see what it is that I'm actually looking for. Um, it's a flex box that will actually include up to three across, uh, and then if there are more, it wraps down below so that I can actually get to where it is that I need to go and see my options right in front of me. So more of just a, a temporary stopgap measure for me. Uh, undoubtedly, the component that you're looking at will evolve into something that looks an awful lot nicer but still has the same basic idea. Um, a nice background image, probably some animation, um, that type of thing will be included. So uh, I actually used it here in the game section as well because they needed one for the two games. We've seen the games previously. Uh, these are the lexicon games that will let you uh, try to see if you know your Disney information, and the focus game that looks more like a, uh, a camera system uh, taking pictures of Disney characters. So, let's get into the actual areas that we're looking at. So, blog entries we've seen previously, and now I've added park info for all of that information. So, uh, I have my list of everything inside of the park. Um, the primary categories are going to be my attractions, locations, lands, hotels, restaurants, and shops, as I stated before. Uh, what you're looking at is a uh, is just a, a table of the first 20 uh, with pagination of all six tables combined together, which, if I toot my own horn just a little bit here, was no small feat trying to get that uh, SQL query together uh, to be able to bring all six tables together with no information that corresponds to each other into this one coherent piece so that I can see everything if I want to. Uh, you can see there are attractions like Alice in Wonderland, uh, walk through attractions like Animation Academy. Uh, I have things like the Blue Bayou Restaurant inside of here, um, California Adventure and Disneyland itself is the actual locations. Um, so all of these are in line, they all include pagination down here at the bottom. Uh, alphabetized by their sorting name uh, and everything is working. In addition, I can also go through and change the sort order. So right now they are sorted by name, ascending. If I hit that, I can go through and now it's named descending. I'm still on page two. Uh, now of course I have the S's instead of the B's and C's and D's. Uh, I can sort it by type, uh, ascending and descending. Uh, I can sort it by its location, which right now is just one, two, three, and null, or I'm sorry, zero, one, two, and null, um, and that'll be fixed with their actual names uh, shortly. The land, if there is one, um, it'll have an empty space instead of an unknown later, and then when did I modify it, and can I see uh, the ones that are the oldest, the ones that I've updated the soonest, and all of those work perfectly with pagination and keep control over their sorting information, so I can see I just did Fantasyland a moment ago. Um, in addition to the full table view, I can view just the individual attractions, or uh, just the individual locations, and the lands, and all of those types of things as well. Um, and those all have their individual pagination and sorting filters also. So uh, those are all working and functioning well. Um, 
I can add new features as I see fit or edit existing ones. Uh, let's get into, I know the attractions are mostly filled, so let's get into one of these and just say Big Thunder, because why not? So I have a primary image up at the top. Um, all of the images here are temporary images. They will be replaced uh, at a later time. I just needed to kind of fill the space. Uh, you can click to update the image, um, and you'll be able to include whatever it is that you want. Uh, as I actually update my library of images, there will be different choices up here. Um, and a little bit better interface, but I have not set that up yet, so this is kind of a stopgap measure. Uh, its name, sort name, uh, unique slug, and those type of things you'd expect to see uh, inside. Anything with an asterisk is a required field. Uh, it will know if it is missing. So, for instance, if I get rid of the open date and try to submit an update, uh, I can see there are errors, and it tells me this field is actually required. Um, so let's go back to September 2 of uh, 1979, a very good year. Um, and I can actually see all of those errors that, uh, that come up, um, you know, including if I don't have a location or a type, um, it'll bark at me for those as well. So um, I, think I can clear out the errors, so I resubmit it to make sure that it goes through, and it'll actually do that for me. Uh, several different options to uh, to include and, and go with on here. Uh, as far as who is the attraction for, several different options for those. As far as is it a dark ride, does it have drops, is it fast, or is it slow? Uh, slow is in here. Um, things like is there a fast pass uh, is in here. Uh, you'll notice down at the bottom it's actually for the fast pass booth location, uh, and it's a required field. Now, if it doesn't have fast pass, how do you get around that? Uh, that's because if there is not a fast pass, that field does not appear down here. So uh, it's keeping track of several conditional fields as well as uh, all of the ones that are always there. So things like app interaction. Now it's asking me how does it interact with the app, um, and gets those uh, gets all of those done, um, and then all of these other fields as well. I do have a first opened here with the calendar as you saw earlier. And over here, I have the actual date, month, and year uh, for that to open. The reason for that is because I had started off with the calendar so that I could have the exact date. And I discovered as I was entering my data, two, folks, two attractions that I could not find exact dates for. Uh, and so I didn't want to present incorrect information as far as putting a false date out there that I thought might be close. So now I've made them their own fields. Uh, so that I can include, uh, say, just the year or just the month and year uh, without the date, and this field will eventually go away for accuracy's sake. Um, you can see the update was successful on that. I can also go through and let's see all of just the attractions, or let's see the hotels. I can create a new one because I don't, uh, don't actually have any hotels in here, so uh, you can see the fields in this are a bit different. So this is uh, the transport to parks. Is there no uh, transportation? Is it free or is it paid? Um, the category of hotel. Um, you know what? Uh, what kind of hotel are we looking at? And the internet availability. What are those options looking like? It has its own set of check marks and things in here, and its own small uh, string input fields. Um, of course, it has a whole different set of fields as well here. Um, several of them are required, several of them are optional, and a lot of the same information. Um, and I can input them here. Oops, hotel with an L. And this is the first one at <laughs> the first hotel. Here's a fun fact for you. So some of these include fun facts as well. And so just some uh, information about the actual uh, hotel itself. Uh, it'll be a lot more detailed than that, obviously. 
Um, and these have their conditionals as well. Um, for example, if I have self parking and valet available, uh, it's going to ask me their price per day uh, for each of those. Uh, if it doesn't have self parking or valet, then they simply won't. You can see those are not down there at the bottom. Uh, I would actually have to research the YouTube ID and the first open date. Um, and then, of course, I can add in my images. Uh, let's get a bit more generic than the castle for this one. Um, and I can go through it and actually update all of this. And, of course, it's not going to let me now because I'm missing several required fields. Um, it's very simple to go through and add and update all the information inside of here for all the individual pieces. Uh, the administrator side took me quite a bit longer than I had originally anticipated. Uh, but I'm quite happy to have it uh, up and running and working at this point. So uh, after the administrator side is, of course, the consumer side. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'm quite pleased with the way that the tiles all came out. Um, so they just look really nice. Uh, everything here includes pagination uh, as well. Uh, right now you're looking just like you did on the administrator side. Everything all matched up. Uh, you can also see just the attractions uh, or just the hotels. And I don't have any hotels in here yet. Uh, just the lands, uh, just the locations, all those type of things. Um, and the hover effect on these individual pieces is, uh, uh, well, I'm quite happy with it. I think it's a quite stunning. So I'll leave you with that just for a moment. Um, so I have a little bit of rework to do on it. Uh, I had actually lifted... Um, the text, the Disneyland text and the um, official text, but it doesn't look like for whatever reason it's lifted anymore, so I need to go see what I changed on there. Uh, but ultimately it's designed to be a 3D effect in addition to the wobble. Um, and then when you get off the hover it just stops and, uh, and goes back to its normal. Uh, this icon I'll be changing to just the map marker without the map behind it. So there was some confusion on what in the world that was, uh, so I don't certainly don't want that. Um, but uh, each different um, each different piece has its own type. So like for attractions, it has right now it's just a horse. It will have looks like a merry-go-round uh, inside of there. Uh, the hotels have a uh, well, picture of a hotel. Uh, the lands for now have this kind of fun um, just sign showing where everything is. Uh, the locations are, oh, the map, of course, we just saw that. The restaurant's just a big piece of food. Uh, and then the shops are the shopping cart uh, to be able to get into there and see. Uh, each one has a little bit of a blurb uh, about just a couple of key points for, uh, for what it is that you're looking at. And then, of course, the short description will go down in here. Um, and this is going to look very similar to the, uh, you know, the list of blogs as well. As far as the page, of course, the tiles are totally different, but uh, um, things like the footer is going to be the same. The fact that it's a 12-panel grid is going to be the same, same search bar and everything. Uh, the free tick search does work, um, so you're able to go through and look for just that. Uh, circus is actually in the description of Dumbo the Flying Elephant. In fact, let's take a look at Dumbo the Flying Elephant just to see why Circus came up here. Um, so we have all of the pertinent information about Dumbo uh, that's there. Down below here, if there's any fast pass information uh, or if the attraction closes for different events, it will actually tell you down here below that ad. still have the ability to share on any of the, uh, the social media channels, uh, and that's actually up and, and working correctly. Um, you can close that out have fun with that. Um, and then it also has several of these, remember the Boolean check marks we had earlier, has those listed up here. So uh, so Dumbo the Flying Elephant is absolutely a must-do attraction. Uh, there will be an icon with a badge here on the side. Uh, it's not there today. Um, it does spin around, things like if it was a dark ride, if it was fully indoors, uh, if it's fast or slow all the time, those would be in here as well. And then who should go, give you kind of an idea of... Uh, um, of who this is really intended for. So, uh, knocked the uh, the teenagers not so much on this list. Um, adults probably not on Dumbo the Flying Elephant. I couldn't go to Disneyland without it, but I certainly understand it's not geared for uh, 30, 40 years old. Um, so, uh, just kind of my ideas on, on where it is that that's going. And I can come back here and see, uh, let's see, something that 
uh, would close for an attraction. Uh, Alice in Wonderland may, so it includes darkness. Uh, it is a slow ride the entire way through, and this attraction might close for shows uh, like the fireworks. Um, and then if I go back here and look for, say, Space Mountain, um, it's looking for space and for mountain, and since it found all of these mountains, uh, <laughs> it goes in with here. Um, but Space Mountain is going to have several of these. It does take your picture. It is a mountain uh, in Disneyland. It includes darkness, drops, it's fast. Um, your fast pass is available. It has a rider switch available and a single rider queue. And where to get fast passes is right next to the ride entrance. Um, and those pieces of information are there as well. Uh, this page is obviously not complete. Uh, there's lots of information that's not actually here. It will include links to uh, articles that are related to uh, Space Mountain. Uh, it will rank them and find the best ones um, that are there for it. In the same way the blog... Uh, um, related information goes across um, so you'll have those on the uh, on the consumer side as well also when I uh, when I get into an individual piece not the not the everything but when I'm looking for an individual area like just hotels or just attractions I'm gonna add some filters here on the side so people can look for attractions that are just for kids or just for grandparents or just for adults uh, drop down that can see if it is uh, um, you know if it's if it includes drops, uh, if it's going to be fast, uh, if it closes for fireworks, uh, or if it closes for different shows, if it has a fast pass available, uh, those types of filters will be available. But since those check boxes are different for each of the six types of tables, um, I want to make sure that that's appropriate for the area of the site that you're on. So those filters will be just on the uh, individual pieces. So. But anyway, that's kind of where the site is at now. I'm very excited to see it coming, uh, coming together so nicely. Um, it's been a uh, quite a work in progress this month. Uh, coming up in June, aside from just the minor fixes to uh, to these pages, which will be pretty quick to uh, to go through, hoping to be done by this weekend. Uh, coming up in June is going to be all of the graphics for the site. So these temporary images uh, will go away. I'll put in more permanent fixtures. I'll have things like the actual site logo, um, some better graphics for the uh, for the games, uh, background graphics for that listing with the temporary. Um, I can show you the the temporary piece that I had. These will actually have background images attached to them. Um, and then, in in addition to uh, you know the foreground pictures, there's also a set of background issues uh, that go along with it as well, uh, and those will be uh, those will be included. So lots of different graphics and animations going. Um, and so those will all be coming next month. I'm quite happy about that. Uh, I've adjusted the timetable for when the site will be completed. Uh, I'm going to have it in two phases so I can actually have a launched version sooner than usual. So it looks like, as I'm looking at my board, uh, the actual open date for everything uh, is going to happen... Um, Let's see, it's going to happen around November, October, November-ish. Um, and that should give me enough time to have everything locked down, uh, production ready, and actually have a front-facing uh, website. That will include things like this information. Uh, it'll include the blog, it'll include the games, um, and uh, of course all the graphics and all of that information. All of the social media will be set up. Um, and, you know, the, generally the community. Uh, will be there. The ability to actually uh, plan a Disney trip will come later. I've deprioritized that uh, just because it's going to take a bit longer than I had wanted it to. It is coming. Uh, I will continue working. Don't plan on stopping working, but that'll come at a later time. And it looks like that part currently is scheduled for around March of next year to launch those features. Um, so I'm going to stay on top of it and get it moving and done. Uh, thank you so much for watching this uh, video, which has gone on much longer than I anticipated. Appreciate your support, and keep watching. This is going to be a very exciting uh, blog site to uh, to go through. Uh, on another note, I just have to point out that the Star Wars Land at Disneyland opened up uh, actually this weekend as I'm recording this. It just looks outstanding, so congratulations to Disney and everyone involved for 
that successful launch. So uh, thanks again very much. We will see you guys soon. We'd uh, appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, YouTube makes me have a certain number of subscribers before I can name it. So that would be really helpful. Thank you guys very much.